everybody who was at the last meeting, who's on the committee, um, was there, were there any problems that you saw on it? Uh, is there a motion to uh, okay the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, I think before, we, uh, as we had started, so um, we have Michael Murdoch here, the vice president of Moats, uh, who's the engineering firm that's who's going to be our maintenance plan advisor. Uh, and we have Mike Richley here, our architect. Um, but there's, uh, they don't, well, Mike knows most of the people, but um, you do not. So let's go back. Why don't we do an introduction? I was going to suggest take a, if each member of the committee could take a minute to, to talk about their expertise, why they're on the committee, and the work they've done thus far for the committee, just not in detail, but just broadly. And then when we're done introducing ourselves, we can maybe have the folks who are attending also introduce themselves, so we'll kind of this all here. Okay, so Terry Holden, superintendent. Uh, my expertise, I feel like I've been doing this a long time. I feel like I know about schools and kids and buildings. Jacob McGrath, treasurer. Megan Winston, principal here at Mills Lawn. Jack Hedder, principal of the middle school and high school. Uh, TJ Turner, I'm a member of the Board of Education. I'm a fill-in member for the, okay, the, the normal member, and uh, since she's on vacation, I'm just filling in for her time. We'll skip you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Judith Templing. I'm on school board, uh, chair of the facility committee, and I have been working primarily with the experts on the committee since we have to observe uh, Sunshine Mall. We can't, we can't be talking to the whole committee outside the meeting, so that's primarily who I've been working with. I'm Scott Fife. I'm a community member and retired school administrator. I'm Mike Richley, Richley Architects. Mike Slaughter. I'm a community member, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm tasked with looking at the IT and the uh, electrical. Terry Pepney. Uh, I was uh, school as a civil engineer. I spent 23 years in plan engineering and 27 years. Uh, with a multi-discipline uh, engineering firm that uh, worked with uh, industrial facilities. Craig Conrad, I was a maintenance supervisor here for 27 years. I uh, retired in 2012. And you want to start with uh, Carlos? Yeah, just... Carlos Landaburu, I am a villager and I am here to tape the meeting. Corey Van Ostal, I'm an alumni parent. Jody Miller, I'm a parent. David, I'm a parent. I'm Gavin DeVore Leonard, I'm a parent. I'm also on the village council, I guess I should say that. Lauren Childs, parent, and work in the David Diamond, parent. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody who's here tonight. Um, so, Tonight, uh, primarily, um, oh, and I should say, we're missing a couple of our members. Well, we know Dorothy Bouquet, who's on uh, the school board, is in France right now, visiting her family. Um, we have David Roach, who is an ASHI certified inspector, who's been one of the building experts. Chris Hamilton is an aerospace engineer. He um, was formerly on the former facility task force and is a parent. Um, and uh, Kanetta Sanford, one of our teachers, um, has uh, taken the summer off. She teaches here at Mills Lawn. And Brian Mayer, is he coming tonight? I don't know if he's... Well, he might be out of town. Okay. Yeah, is our, um, I'm not going to say it right, he's the music, the orchestra. Orchestra and band, grades 5 through 12. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anybody else? I don't know. Richard. Oh, Richard Zoff is not here. Uh, and he's, I know he's over at... Um, Antioch working with their work day over at the college. Um, he's kind of the jack of all trades uh, kind of person. And is there anybody else? Is there anybody else in the committee? Okay. 
So um, we're going to start out, um, so M Michael Murdoch is the Vice President of Moats Engineering. His uh, daughter is President, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, the, the school district has hired Moats Engineering um, to be our maintenance plan advisor. And tonight he's going to just describe the scope of their work, their work plan, and, and maybe some of your experience that you've sure. had. Okay, here's some handouts from them. And these are, he's actually on the agenda with, with Michael. Oh, there, there it is. Cool. Oh, for cool. cool. Thursdays. So okay, great. Cool. 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 All right, Mike Murdoch, can I come here? Yes, go Okay, Moats um, <laughs> Engineering. Um, I'm a civil and mechanical engineer. Um, I've been uh, working on buildings and, and home engineering for about 35 years. Uh, Moats Engineering um, is a, we're the fourth generation owners of Moats Engineering. Uh, it's one of the original, it is one of the founding engineering firms of the Ohio Purveyors of Engineering Board. Um, it's about an 85 year old firm. Um, we specialize, uh, we have about 45 employees. We have offices in Orlando, Columbus, and Cincinnati. We specialize in higher ed and K-12 projects. Um, we design, um, engineer um, K-12 projects all over the state and, and, and in Florida as well. Um, we, uh, one of the things we, we do is these kinds of studies where we go in and evaluate and buildings of all sorts, but frequently they're K-12 buildings. We evaluate the buildings um, and perform what essentially is a facility condition assessment. Where we evaluate the assets and the condition of the assets in the building um, identify what we think um, the remaining life cycle is, identify what we think the replacement cost or repair cost would be if there's such a thing, and um, kind of aggregate that and provide a report um, that identifies uh, the status of each system. And we get very detailed, we take photographs, we evaluate the equipment, determine if it's obsolete, if it can be repaired, um, if it's performing as it should, to the degree we can. Um, and then we provide what we think would be a reasonable estimate to get the work replaced or repaired. Um, so in addition to that, part of my scope uh, of this particular assignment is to produce a maintenance um, plan. The maintenance plan will have raw data about each piece of equipment, model serial number, um, age if we can identify it, um, if we can find the original manufacturer's maintenance requirements, we'll dig those out and identify what maintenance the piece of equipment should be getting, if it's be in getting those, um, and then we'll put that in some kind of database. So one of the questions I have is how do you want that delivered? Do you want it delivered in a binder? Do you want it delivered in a facilities, can, uh, facilities maintenance uh, software tool? Or how do, you want it, how do you want to go forward with it? Because it's a lot of data, literally, um, any mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, light fixture, any item we can, we can identify, we're going to try to identify and put it in the database. Um, to, at the conclusion of that, we're going to make recommendations on what we think your facilities would need um, in order to bring them up to a like new condition. And um, we'll try to coordinate that with uh, Mike and his, his report, his study so that we're consistent along what his plans are, so we're not either overshooting or undershooting, we understand what, you're, what you can't afford to do, what your budget allows you to do, and then, and then provide that information accordingly. So that's in essence. And the, and the purpose of all this, and, and this is essentially the first step in um, any design we would perform for any client, would be to go in and evaluate their facilities, identify what's, what's there, what can be used I'm sorry. From point gestation. Okay. Um, so this is a very common exercise in um, in what we do to go in and evaluate the existing conditions. So okay. keep going. I'm sorry. Uh, Someone's trying to get in. Oh, okay. So in terms of what one, um, Dr. Holden, one of the things she asked me to do in, in preparation for this meeting is provide a approximate schedule as to when we would start. So if you want to go to the very top, our plan would be to bring 
my mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection team out here somewhere in the range of July 20. We'd probably spend the entire day here. There'd be four or five of us. And we'd go through each building, top to bottom, taking photographs, identifying as much information as we can. Um, hopefully, there's some floor plans in the building that would be useful. Um, and then um, we take all that information back, um, start organizing it. I'd come back out on the 27th, and we would have my low voltage team. We'd look at any building automation systems, any building control systems you have, the security system. You have any technology, you'd love to talk to your technology consultant, if you have one, or whoever your technology person is, so that he can he or she can inform me as to what they have, and, and we can get our sense of what you, what you have. Fire alarm would be the other low voltage system we would look at. And then um, my, um, my structure and an envelope consultant, THP engineers, uh, is he, he's, when I talked to him this evening, he thought the 2nd of August is about when he would want to come out here. And again, he would bring a team. I suspect they would have ladders and they would get on the roof and they would walk around the entire exterior. They're going to look at the um, roof very carefully. They're going to do some um, scans of the roof. They're going to look at windows and doors, um, foundations, walls, chimneys. Um, and then the site conditions around the space uh, in terms of access, steps, um, ramps, guardrails, etc., fall hazards, any kind of nuisance items. And then he would begin his, he would start working on his, his report. Um, we would probably come up and join him so we could look at some of those conditions as well. I'd probably be here, or one of my guys would be here in regard to that. Um, we'd anticipate um, by August 19th producing a draft report. The draft report would be rough. It would d d go through each system. Um, it would have some of our preliminary conclusions. Uh, we wouldn't make any kind of recommendation yet. We would, we would just be reporting on what we know, what we found. And it would be very technical. And it would be, um, you know, to the degree we can find maintenance requirements, we'll have those as well. And, then, and that report would be submitted, and I suspect I would expect that the, the committee or whomever would digest it. And then I would come up on the 23rd, and we would have a discussion. And you would hammer me probably pretty hard about what's in the report and argue, I don't argue is the right word, but debate, discuss. Um, it's generally a pretty active meeting, that first meeting after the report. Um, get feedback, try to understand if we have to go revisit spaces or revisit systems, we do that. We'd submit a second preliminary report, what, what I typically call a 90% draft. This would include recommendations. Um, it would include anything I could, I could uh, get from my structural inspection. Um, we, again, try to coordinate that um, report with Richley Architects, make sure we're consistent with where he's going and then have another discussion sometime in early September. Um, my goal would be to give you a final report sometime mid-September. Um, and, and at that time, I'd also have the maintenance data formatted in whatever format you guys wanted in. So, oh, I don't know if you, you, you participate in the OCC system, but they have a system in Oaks that is the maintenance report you have to conduct whenever we do any kind of design or commissioning for uh, a Oaks, an OFCC building. So, <clears throat> I want to stop you here. No Somebody problem. asked, Jerry asked, of, of Jay, are we eligible for OFCC? The answer is yes and no. We absolutely were eligible for OFCC money, but as, as we've explained before and, and we need to continue to explain, we are only eligible for the ELP program. So because of that, because our, our renovate to build new ratio is so high, we only qualify for OFCC money if we build new. That's just the long and the short of it. Our, our, they go by property wealth, you know, the amount of property you have in the, in the district. So we did, if you remember, in November of 21, that was an OFCC ELP project at 26%. Um, I, that was my question. What's the OAKS? Is, is it a... This is the data. They're, they're soft software. They're online uh, system. So they have, and I would imagine, since you're a public school, you would be eligible to use their system. Okay. I would assume. It, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, the system, OAKS is an acronym. 
I can't tell you what right. it means. It's something. We well, can but, call our consultant. That yeah. Means, so that format that they use um, essentially was um, required when the state started funding a lot of these right. public schools around the around the state. Right. They would build a school, and the school district wouldn't do the maintenance, and they'd be back five years later replacing things. So they established this maintenance database and this maintenance study, a maintenance requirement right. uh, in that. And so we routinely fill that that uh, maintenance report out when we design a building or we commission a building on turnover that has to be finished. So we can use that. We can use another. There's all kinds of databases out there for um, hey, you more management. Have a, you have a for well, there's a really inexpensive one. It's kind of odd name it's called school dude it's about two thousand bucks i think you buy it you get it it's relatively simple it works probably for 90 percent of the schools out there if you're a big big public school like a columbus or cincinnati public probably isn't adequate but i would i would i could give you a list if you want to evaluate them there's some really inexpensive ones but it's basically a a, a database for your data and it's a work order management system so it allows you to as a, as a you know employee of the school to issue a work order or say hey I have this stained ceiling tile and the maintenance guy can come over and look at it. We can also use that as an archive for any drawings or for any data we collect or any any uh, owner's manuals or any any of the stuff that we generate when we're doing the study. It can be a depository for that information. So once you buy it, you know it, it just has to be put on a, on a computer somewhere here. Kind of purchase. I think so. I'm not not for sure. I, I think it is a one-time purchase. Perfect purchase. Yeah, they're probably trying to get you for a hundred bucks a year or something. But I think it's a yeah, it's cloud probably. I agree. It's probably we, we currently have a maintenance management system. Well, it may be adequate. Make that clear. We do have a maintenance okay. management system. Yeah, not, does it do everything that school do does? I do not know. Have to well, we can look at it. We certainly yeah. can load the data into your existing system if, that's, if you want to do that. Is Oaks, uh, my guess is that all of these databases you can <coughs> extract it into Excel. Oaks yes. Is, Oaks is just what the state OFCC requires. Requires yes. and uses, and you're saying it's a dig, like an online database. Yes. Um, so, like I said, I imagine we'll be able to download any of those reports if Absolutely. you want it to. Absolutely. Yeah, when we generate the data, a lot of it, the, the raw data will be in an Excel format that we upload mm -hmm. into your database. Once we understand how your database works, okay. we, we mirror that and, and then we upload it right into it. Um, so, yeah, it's, and then, you know, all the books and photos and all that kind of stuff, you may want to put it somewhere in your database. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily, you know. Yeah, that's the name of ours too. Well, ours is part of a bigger system we have. It's called EasyMate. It's it's a whole suite of. It's how we do our um, safety reports. It's how we do our safety training. It's how we do our uh, student discipline. So it's kind of discipline for schools, or specifically tailored for schools. Um, well, I mean, you're saying it's part of public school work. Right? It's part of public school work, so okay. it's a, yeah. Okay. You know, does it, it is it as sophisticated as school dude? Probably not, but I, I don't yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But we do have a, okay. I mean, for us it manages our uh, maintenance requests. So okay. if I'm a classroom teacher and I want something done, you can't just say, hey, Craig, I need this done. You need to put it in, in as a work request so that we can track this. Okay. Does it handle fixed assets? <laughs> Scott, I don't think so. No. Is that something you'd want it to do? Um, <laughs> not, not necessarily, no, because um, that's done differently as well. You know, there, there's the maintenance or even like technology, okay, like technology should be inventorying student laptops, but that's a student laptop isn't a fixed asset. So. Right. Um, it gets kind of muddy to mix those. I'd like to just throw a couple things out. One is, Terry, I wanted to follow up on something you said about OFCC funding. Um, I don't want to get ahead of this process, but let's say this results in the renovation of two projects. Um, the process to get funding for that would be a two-thirds waiver request. So yeah. because yeah. the renovation, will, by their standards, will exceed two-thirds of the cost of new construction, 
uh, the superintendent will be required to send to the OCC a letter stating why these buildings are to be kept. Uh, their committee reviews it. They send a team down to look at the buildings and make their own assessment of if the buildings can be kept and then report back. Um, my, my opinion is given the age of the buildings, that's not a slam dunk, uh, particularly if it were to you know, get out ahead of it. I mean, you're right. And, a, yeah. and Valerie, our, our consultant, was very upfront about that. She's like, look, you can do it. She's like, I don't approve it, but I'm going to tell you. Probably not, because what they look at is what is the kind of architectural and historical uh, va value of the buildings. Um, and, and I think a reference point for me, what helped me understand it is I come from Cincinnati, where Cincinnati public schools have many old buildings that have whole walls of Rookwood, original Rookwood tiles. Some of the schools were on the you know historic register. That is something that would drive a two thirds waiver. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure the committee is aware of that uh, if if these end up being renovation projects, state funding is not given. Thanks, for the yeah. And then secondly, I was just going to comment on um, Michael. I appreciate the database and stuff, but just in my experience, I would just consider keeping it simple. Because things change and you have a small district and if you can go find a binder somewhere in, the few, in four years where this is all printed versus lost in the cloud in some software update, just something to, to consider. Or just electronic documents. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I think we're looking for that. No back problem. In hand. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. I want the data. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. However you want it served up. But it, it, it'll be digitized <laughs> in our office so in some future day if you want it. We certainly give it to you as to how or what, whatever format you want. But yeah, binders are not uncommon. Yeah. Okay. Um, Duke, was there anything more you wanted to? Um, well, in the final report, um, um, whatever maintenance costs and schedules we identify would be in there. Any kind of construction um, cost would be in there. And I'd probably want to uh, make sure that I was consistent with what Michael thinks. Um, any kind of duration or schedule information, anything that we think would be pertinent in terms of you making a decision, we try to provide, you know, mm -hmm. that would be the intent of that last piece. And if there's other things you want in the report, I'm happy to add those or discuss those, whatever you think you need to add. And in, in are these dates um, just kind of uh, targets on your end? Yeah, like, we want like to. Like August twenty third isn't isn't it's just a date. That well, I have to coordinate with you all, okay. right? Because that may be a date you don't want, you know, or it's some. I'm, so part of it would be what works for you. It's kind of where we would like to start. We'd like to start. And that, but that general time. Yes, correct. Including so, the so steps you want to take with your meetings. Do you want to do those on your own with your own group as you go through the schools? I'm sorry, I didn't want to try to understand what was it. When you go through the buildings yeah. with your team, yeah. do you want to do that alone? Yeah, I mean, if someone wants to join us, there might be somebody, a maintenance supervisor, somebody that needs to unlock doors or can get us access. But, but I mean, we're I mean, it's generally we scatter. So the plumbing guys go look at the plumbing stuff, the mechanical guys go find the mechanical equipment, the electrical people, you know what I mean? And it's general level. They're doing their, each, they're doing their own thing. So we have mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers that will all be up here to get their things. Um, so August 23rd, you're going to do that preliminary report. Um, so, so this Thursday, you're coming to school board? Is that what you told us? I think that you asked me that's to be there. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So, we, so we were going to do <laughs> more cameras. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> so. Um, so there, there were going to be three meetings that you were going to meet with uh, the facility committee and two meetings with school board. So I was just looking at the schedule here. One thing that we've all done, like the users have done a users, they've done a, a questionnaire, which is information that I think would be useful to you. Sure. Um, the experts have looked at the different systems. They're rather cursory looks, but they um, have, they were talking with Craig Conrad and our current. Sure, any um, information so we, would be useful. So, we could probably get that to you now. I, you know, you may find some of it's not uh, when you take a deeper look or not. You know, thorough or yeah. are missing things. I'm sure they will be. Um, so I guess my thought though is that on so you're going to do a preliminary report on the 23rd. 
So you were going to come back to us at some point, go to the school board at some point. Um, so I'm wondering if the preliminary, it, it makes sense to me that the, um, you would be coming to the committee for that, with that preliminary report to have that given take that yeah. you were talking about. Yeah, you tell me if you don't want me to report, you tell me where and who you want me to report. Well, that's to. what makes sense to me if we're doing three meetings. And we've got some people who have been thinking about buildings, you know, this group of people, um, that that would happen before it came back to, it came back to the school board. But I'm just wondering, um, I'm just kind of, I think we should keep it in mind. I'm not quite sure. We have to figure it out tonight. I don't think we do. And I want to say Mike, I know, is going to address this when he, okay. when he talks. Okay. Cool. Because he and I have met. I, I guess I have a couple requests. My request would be that we allow, uh, uh, notes to do their assessment. I think they really need to come in and just do their assessment without any input from any of us. Because then it's when they present that, then we can ask questions and we can get some understanding. I have all of the, the reports for you that I can give you. I'm thinking the 23rd may not be, um, I, I mean, I don't know, Mike, what do you think about that timeline? But but we'll have to kind of juggle some things and, and, and Mike's Sure, none of this is set in stone. But, totally but I guess fine. my question was... And it can be more meetings if necessary. There's you're, no, you're just thinking about that kind of sequence of yeah, timing. Yeah, right. I, I wanna, I'm trying to... I want to be finished so that you have the information um, so you can act on it by mid-September. Mm -hmm. Late September. Yeah. Yeah. I think your I think your schedule is awesome up till 3. And then I think you I think you went too fast. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Between three and four, I I would recommend maybe there's a couple months of wrestling okay. that's gonna happen at the committee and the board level. Okay. Because I think the final report should let that process happen. So so the preliminary stuff is awesome, early September, get that teed up and then have have June you know, it's it's up to you about how many or have, have the facilities committee wrestle with it, and then the board might even want sure. to take a bite at wrestling with it. And then the final report then documents where we land, sure. as opposed to happening on September 16th. That's fine. That's fine. That's kind of where my thought is. Okay. I think you're right that, you know, once we get that information, we're going to need some time to digest it and set it up against what we, in the community, Kind of know about our community, etc., and, and how to move forward. Then that's going to take a little take time, and we're going to need some to be have time to have conversations in the community yeah. with, with, with the larger community also. Okay. Uh, do, does anybody else have? Do, are there any questions? I have or, a question. Will your report also prioritize sure. need? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, you, there's an OCC assessment with a pretty recent offset, which mm -hmm. we uh, give that to you. And also there's a pretty exhaustive Fanning and Howie mm -hmm. assessment that happened. You can make sure you get that. I, yeah, I think I've seen that. I think I you gave it to Brad or yeah. published it in the, mm -hmm. and there's yeah. a lot I in there. I think we did, but I will, I'm happy to share it again. It'll be a lot in there for your team to see. Okay. And it pretty, should really help. Yeah, pretty comprehensive. Any other questions on the table? Any questions from the citizens? You know, this process has been going on for quite a long time. We've been involved from the get-go, and we decided, hey, something needs to be done with our facilities. And I understand there's information being shared with MOATS now. That's great. Um, as a citizen, I have a feeling it's going to be very similar to what we found in the past. That's great. Um, has this ever been done before? Have we ever done had an engineer actually look at all these facilities before? Maybe I'm just not recalling. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of seems like it's cycling back to what we've been doing for six years now. Um, and I don't mean that, uh, maybe that's just the point to be put out is, I think a lot of citizens are feeling this way. Um, we've been very thorough in this whole process for a long time. Um, so I'm just, hey, this is great. I appreciate the depth that we're going into this. Um, as a citizen, I'm just concerned that we're just going to keep rehashing the same thing over and over again. So I hope, hopefully something new comes out of it. I guess is my hope. Okay. 
All right. Well, any no more questions or comments? Let's let's go to Mike. Okay. Firstly. Thank you very much. Um, so my part that I'll be helping to lead or facilitate is the educational planning pieces of this. So beyond the pipes and the roof and the windows, uh, et cetera, uh, which Michael and his team is going to look at, would be the educational aspects. So I met with Terry and we kind of designed together a process to get to that answer. And um, the process uh, we're proposing is a kind of a two work session format put us in the position that by the beginning of September we have some preliminary kind of bubble diagram options uh, for some solutions. Uh, so work session number one, and I don't know, Megan and Jack, if you guys have heard, but um, uh, I'll be coming, coming to you uh, to understand how all your existing spaces are currently being utilized and then what your vision is uh, for the future of the buildings, the deficiencies you see, all encompassing. So administrative areas, educational areas, um, food service, these things that are impacting uh, the education of kids, um, counseling, small group, pull out, all kind of comprehensively. So that'll be uh, work session number one, and I think we've got separate meeting times for both of you. And then we'll come back for work session number two with some just preliminary ideas or thoughts just to make sure I'm kind of hearing and understanding your, your vision correctly. And then we'll um, work that out together. And then, and then from the findings or the outcome of that, whatever that turns out to be, we'll present to the committee, team that up with um, Michael's draft report one or two in that early September time frame. So the goal is we've got a report on the maintenance plan, the facilities, technical issues, but then also some preliminary reports on the, uh, the educational adequacy pieces. And so hopefully to give the committee a, the fullest picture possible of uh, what the needs are and what some possible solutions might be. And when we're talking about deeper renovation and new construction, are those, is that also going to be a prioritized list? Uh, I don't know if we're going to get there by the beginning of September, but hopefully maybe that two month of wrestling process is what we can get to as a group with uh, principal input, superintendent input, some of my thoughts, and then maybe the committee would want to weigh in on prioritizing uh, items. Okay. Questions for Mike? or comments. I think a lot of what um, will come up in these meetings is what, you know, I know on the agenda there's a, a prioritized needs discussion for from the users list and, and I think that's going to come up because um, the teachers are, and, and other staff are speaking pretty clearly about what they feel are the needs um, in, in both things. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Do people understand how this is moving forward? Well, I understand that this process is to see what the needs are and come up with some possible solutions without, at least the initial part of this, without uh, respect to costs involved. And then uh, after Mike comes back, there's going to be some have to be hard decisions to make based on on budget budget issues. So you know, do we focus some of these uh, potential solutions with cost in mind, or we got a blank check, or how we, what's our approach here? No, we don't, no, we don't have a plan, Jim. I mean, I think that we all know that. <laughs> but, but I, I mean, I, I would say you need the list of what everything costs mm -hmm. right. before you can say, well, this is just too much. So, I, I think um, right now it is looking at that list of needs and um, addressing those issues, and you know, using their reports, um, and then. 
the decision on what you do with that is certainly influenced by cost um, and what you're willing to ask for and what you're willing to pay for. Um, but you know, you don't want to cut some stuff out now and just say, ah, we don't even want to look at it because it's just too much. We, you, you need to know that answer. Um, and, and I don't think anybody has an agreement on what's too much and um, what needs to be cut out. So I, I would say we, we need to look at the full scope. So the first part of this exercise is to identify the needs and come up with possible solutions without regard to cost. Then, after we get that information from September on, then we have to make these decisions related to cost issues. And I think, and I think Judith hit on something where she said we need community conversations. And, and I want community conversations with my parents and, and families. And so as we present all of this, right, what, here it is, <laughs> here are the cost, I mean, we can see, we can say what we think are priorities, but I also want to hear from them because without them, we don't exist. And, and it's our goal to make sure we meet the needs of our students and, and teachers and parents and families. So I think, you know, this, this idea of, of getting, having community meetings and getting input, um, even if we feel like we've had it before, I, I think it's important that we hear from our, our parents. As one, as one of the groups, one of the several, no doubt, that we will be talking to. When um, early on, you know, when the idea of developing a maintenance plan and a permanent improvement plan was developed, you know, the community, uh, when we talked to other schools that, when I was a part of conversations uh, with other schools who do permanent improvement plans, um, one thing that they made clear is an OFCC report, um, those kind of reports are not the kind of reports that schools use who do permanent improvement plans. They use, they look at the needs of their buildings, they pri prioritize those needs. Those buildings are not real, do not, are not maintained to the level of new. They're an older building that is, is um, meeting the needs of the students. And where there is some new uh, construction needed, well, that's going to be a new part of the building. However, um, to think that this is going to, um, that we want to, um, at least my feeling is what the community said they wanted, is to really be able to consider a permanent improvement plan. And that hasn't been done in the past. And that's not what a Fanning Howie report was or an OSCC report was. Um, so, you know, when I am over, you know, Kettering, Centerville, their schools, some of them look very similar to, to um, Mills Lawn on the outside. I don't know what's going on on the inside, but they're, they're an older building. Generally, they look like they've been kept up pretty well, um, and that's what people in the community said they wanted to consider and understand what that would look like, so that's what we're doing here. Um, <coughs> Yes, go ahead. Uh, in, in our studies, we typically, and I'm sure we'll do it here, um, in terms of cost, make three or four good, better, best recommendations. Because we understand the dollars drive all these decisions and drive all of, you know, what you ultimately can do and can't do. So, you know, we try to identify what we think is the best solution, but recognize sometimes that the school district can't afford it. So what are a good, better, best, and, and pros and cons. And you know, every system will have at least three or four of those kinds of options. And we'll be ready to discuss all of those options. And so you are as, as informed as you can be. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, the building experts, um, so we're going to look at prioritiz prioritization list of the building experts regarding maintenance needs of the current buildings. And um, so there's a little update report, um, a couple of uh, 
couple of things that um, we, we divided it, and really they're, they're fairly short lists. Um, the first thing was, oh wait, let me back up. Um, we did have some questions actually sure. for all of you. At what level of renovations do current building codes kick in? Because we know that there, what are the, what are the, the things that kind of set off that now you have to meet uh, this current building code, whereas in the past you did not? Uh, it really depends on the plans examiner. Who, do you know who your jurisdiction having authority is? Green County. Yeah. That's not Green County. It's actually the village is now the, has the, the village dropped Green County and they contracted with National uh, Inspection Corporation. Okay. Do they do the plans examining? Miami, well. Do they do the plans examining and yes. permit as yes. well? That's me. Okay. So usually there's a discussion. It's not a hard and fast rule. Um, I've been involved in buildings where we do very little and it's not sprinkled and they want it sprinkled. And so that's where they draw the line. I've been in projects where it's pretty invasive and there's they look at some of the equipment and say you don't have to worry about the electrical code or this or that. For for us, it's about life safety first. So anything that we think is a life safety issue um, is immediately addressed is the highest priority. Um, code is somewhat nebulous. Depends on the examiner. It depends on this jurisdiction and authority. We've had designs passed by and permitted. Codes inspection fine or uh, plans examiner says fine, and then we have an, an inspector who at the end of the job says, no, I don't want that. I want an exit light here. I want this there. And so you get into this negotiation with the, with the building inspector at the end of the job. So it's, um, I don't anticipate a lot of code issues here. I hope not at least. But what, what triggers a full fire alarm upgrade? Is that the right. one with the full pronunciation? So That's going to happen. They're not going to sure. really like that. You're going to have to go to the new most current fire alarm enunciation that's it's, it's a good thing anyway so that's going to save lives sprinklers don't necessarily save saves property not necessarily lives the fire alarm will save lives um that's definitely true mm -hmm. have you encountered the situation where the cost of renovations itself triggers uh building code requirements there is typically in the code a requirement over a certain dollar amount um that does happen, yeah. In Hamlin County, that's frequently what they draw a line at. They say, well, it's over this dollar amount, you're gonna bring everything up to code. Right. And if you're if you're doing it over time, do they or is it that whole surely plan? easier to get away with not bringing everything up to code. <laughs> okay. Um, well, will we include that in your report then? Like uh, what I think the, the, the good, better, best and uh, you know, maybe the best is where it triggers and how much additional we may want to meet with um, yeah. National Inspection Authority. That was my, uh, what I was going to say. Let's meet with them and find like Once we get a feel for where this is landing, is that, is that a meeting with them as part of this process? Right. How early on are you thinking? Like, think, are you thinking? I think in, and to let us get into the options and get a feel for where this committee's heading out of, and then we'll take it to the uh, National Inspection Authority and have a preliminary meeting. Mm -hmm. Between the two of you, and I guess I'm a little unclear on, on one of the things that's going to be important to me is the educational adequacy of what we're doing. So we're not just, you know, bringing everything up to where we were in 1952. So where is that going to fall between the two of you? It seems like we have more on Mike's yeah, so be my, my job to kind of champion that and then work closely with Michael Steen to make sure, hey, we're considering maybe a small addition on this side of the building. And what does he need to do with utilities to make sure that we're prepping and we're not cutting off anything that's important. But that, that'll be my kind of charge to to be that voice of that piece of it. And then Mike's team will, will be the maintenance plan and the technical aspects of the engineering. We support his and the, your ultimate vision of how you want to do it. So if it's technology, if it's light, if it's acoustics, if it's air conditioning or whatever, we follow his lead on what how he wants to. And you're getting that with input both from the user surveys and talking to Jack and Megan and yes. through the building. Okay. 
Yes, and, and that's not an exclusive. Terry, did you have a larger group for the work sessions than the principals? Or, uh, um, I'm going to leave that up to the principals, but, okay. but I think they've I mean, they've been talking to their teachers for a while now. They know. I mean, look at them. You know they what know. they want? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty clear. Oh, it's, it's what they need, too. Okay. Correct. What the difference between wants and needs is, is the community's hammered home, and we can't really debate on what that means, but there are very clear needs that we need. We require if we're going to do the best for our children to Another question was regarding energy efficiency and sustainability. People are interested, and the community are interested in uh, thinking, having that be part of the thinking. Is there? Yeah, I think there's a lot you can do in terms of sustainability. First of all, you can't go out and buy a, a, a wasteful appliance or air conditioning appliance nowadays. So everything that's available to us is, is relatively high efficiency. Um, you can you can always exceed the the requirements, but the code minimums are pretty good um, compared to what they used to be. So, uh, in, and and the code is very um, specific about um, you know air changes and healthful environments. More so with since COVID, uh, filtration systems are improving. Um, so we expect this next iteration of the of the building code and ASHRAE, which is the HVAC industries. Um, governing body to be much more restrictive on air filtration, air changes, um, and what kind of quality of the air in space is, and how we monitor that. Um, but in your in climate up here, there's a lot of things. I think I mean, we can be very creative, again, following the architect's recommendations of how we heat and cool, and how we do it efficiently. Um, so yeah, we've done some really interesting things around the state. So. Cool. Did you have anything specific, Jerry? Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? Follow up? Yeah. Um, okay. Where would the evaluation of the food service and the um, cafeteria situation and the eating situations, would that lie with you or with the employees? I look at the equipment would be the extent of my. Yeah, and you know, uh, um, just for full transparency, we do not have a food service consultant on our team. If there's a desire from the committee to get a professional to look at that, that's something we could consider. Um, but from a planning perspective, you know, uh, the size of the serving area, the size of the seating area, uh, you've got some planning issues now that where you have people queuing in corridors because there is no serving area. We, we can definitely look at the planning aspects of that. Um, and if it needs some expertise, we could recommend that the committee brings on a food service consultant. I feel like that has been noted as a big issue, especially at the high school. Um, so I just wanted to make sure it was being covered. With, in terms of, um, there are certain stand, are there certain standards, my understanding there are certain standards that the state has, like when OFCC is helping us build this we can build a, a, build a they have certain uh, square footage requirements for students. Is this true? Yes. Okay. Um, and is that something that what we currently have will be uh, kind of measured against? If, if we want to look at the benchmark of what you currently have versus state standards, we can, we can do that. that because yeah. I think that could be useful. Because I assume <laughs> when we were thinking about building new, that those state standards were applied. Correct. 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 So, like when we uh, when we uh, size the size of the student dining room, it's based on the enrollment. Um, these get back to some other issues, which we're going to talk about. Is about what is the great configuration of the buildings? Are there multiple options for different great configurations in the building? As you know, because as you add load to certain projects or to take load out of certain projects, that might take pressure off or add more pressure to. So it'll, it'll be interesting. But yeah, we can use OSFC uh, square footage guidelines as a benchmark. To help. So that because at some point there's going to be some kind of a comparison trying to be made, you know, in terms of cost, and we want to be thinking about it. I think as close to apples to apples as possible. Yeah. I just I wanted to ask you a follow-up actually on something that you mentioned, uh, looking at some schools in Centerville and Kettering, um, and 
seeing that they have a similar status and a similar history as this building. Um, how do the facilities there compare with the current middle school, high school building in terms of design and renovation history? Um, and, uh, and that sort of thing, do you see that a lot in, in Kevin and I, I haven't seen it close at hand. We talked to the um, facility manager about how they go about putting together the permanent improvement plan. Um, however, one thing we're planning to do this fall is um, take a couple of trips looking at, well, we had talked about um, older buildings that have been uh, renovated uh, in ways to you know, uh, meet you know, current educational needs um, to see how other schools have done it. And then there was the idea of seeing a new school, although uh, one of the committee members suggested instead of a brand new school, we see a school that's maybe five years old, 10 years old, so we know how they're standing up these newer, uh, the, these new buildings um, in terms of, you know, so we have something to think about beyond just the moment in which they're completed, built, and, you know, so we can actually see how, they're, how they function over a few years. Well, based on what you've seen, would you expect to find something that's fairly close to what we have over there? I don't, I don't know for sure. I'm just talking about how they plan to take care of their buildings and they don't use the OFCC, they don't use an OFCC recorder. Do you have any That's recommendations on projects you've done? Oh yeah, we can, we can, we can, yeah. yeah. so buildings this vintage are all over the state. Uh, we renovated nine very similar vintage buildings two years ago. Uh, in Forest Hills, um, Anderson Township down, down, down in Cincinnati. Um, very similar, one story, um, you know, similar facades. This is a very common design brick block ladder. Uh, I was talking about our, our other building. Yes, I don't know that as well. I've driven by it, walked okay. around it, I haven't been in it, but I think that's that's a more unique design. It looks like an apartment building the first time I looked at it. So that was kind of my point. You know, yeah, you know, I don't know. It, that's. I haven't seen that design so much. This is very common. Right. And it's typical, 20 years you go in, you replace carpet, ceiling tile, mechanical equipment, um, and, and you know, they, there's buildings that are 50, 60 years old that just were renovated, and they're expecting another 20 or 30 years out of it. So it's not, you know, it's not expected. I, I just want to make sure we're, keeping our focus and that is I think David if I understand you correctly your question was about um, what where are other buildings like ours and then you know, Judith you said we're really in really want to see other districts that have a maintenance plan to address building needs but I want I just want to emphasize again the, it's not a dollars to dollars we're not we're not talking about the same thing so what they can do with a permanent improvement levy in terms of really addressing building needs, we cannot do. To get that amount of money in a permanent improvement levy, we might as well have a bond issue because it's so much for us. And I just think it's important to, to keep that in mind. I mean, we have an expert from Centerville City right here on this facilities committee. Scott has done this. And, and so I think he understands what I'm talking about. So I just want to make sure that we're all kind of aware of that. Doing a maintenance plan at a one for a 1.2 mil PI is not going to get us anywhere. And I know we know that, but I think it's important to, to keep going back to that. That is not going to get us anywhere. And, and as we know, it hasn't gotten us there to begin with. So to think that it's going to get us um, new systems, or even just small additions like a secure vestibule, it, it is not going to do that. Mike, I have a question for you. I was a part of the, the first bond, um, and, and I know you work closely on that. How how different do you feel like this scope of this work is compared to that one? As far as when we start talking deep renovations and additions, does so, it feel wildly different than what that first proposal was? 2018, and, and I, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I, mean, I keep saying that, but um, I think a big difference is going to be the tower. And the 2018 proposal, the tower came down. And that's your primary educational house. 
So when that came down, we had to do a significant addition just to make up for what we lost. So I think a, the biggest difference would be if the lens of, of looking at that project is primarily to maintain what we have, uh, and if the tower is going to stay, what happens to the band room, what happens to the shoebox, what does the secure vestibule look like, what does other renovations look like. I think those are going to be the differences. So um, my hunch is it's going to be a much lighter version of the 2018 plan. That's my instincts. But I don't want to. Right. <laughs> I don't want to lead it too far down the road. Well, um, so. Uh, so that's basically, you know, a big chunk of the work going forward. Our you guys are going to be doing it. Uh, we're going to be sharing the information we gathered, and then you're going to take that forward. And then we're going to sort of come back in as a committee, as individuals on the committee, uh, when you start bringing the information that you're gathering to the committee. That's kind of what I'm saying. So, what do you think? Okay. Um, well, it, this is kind of feels like it's changing gears. Um, the uh, experts got together. We looked at um, so we actually we developed an immediate needs list. Um, these are things that we felt needed to be done really if possible over the summer, and if not over the summer, um, you know at the beginning of the school year. Um, the immediate needs we. I've listed here at Mills Lawn, securing window air conditioners that are loose. Uh, there are electric boxes over here that have live electric wires in them that are not locked, that need to be locked. Uh, and there's two very loose handrails that really are a safety issue. So we feel like those things need to be dealt with like pretty immediately. At the middle high school, this is what our folks on the committee saw. There might be other people who don't agree, but um, was the um, there's a there's an antenna. I don't know if anybody's ever climbed it, but it could be climbed very easily. So uh, there was a feeling there needed to be an anti-climb structure put around it. Um, there is an east wall of the tower that was inspected last year by a structural engineer, Shell Meyer, that they said was missing wall anchors um, that they felt was necessary to um, really anchor wall and so there was a feeling we should check and see what's has that been done if it hasn't been done is it necessary for that to be done sooner rather than later um, the issues of the tower stairs the excessive spacing the handrails spindles uh, the open flooring areas by the stair windows um, that those should be addressed soon and uh, that the exterior stairwell railings uh, that they, there, something should be done to make them more secure. Um, and then beyond that, oh, and the, also the, the roof junk, juncture between the high school, uh, front of the high school and the gym, where there's evidently active leaking going on, um, that it should be addressed. Um, the prioritized needs list, I think it's not too surprising. We have roofs first. Um, there is a concern particularly about the roof over the gym and the high school um, that it's not been leaking, but concerned that it, it's in need of uh, being replaced. There's a lot of HVAC problems in both buildings. Uh, in, the, in the middle high school, a lot of it seems to be the controls are not working very well. Um, so there, and there are the immediate issues with uh, HVAC uh, if there is some way to make things more comfortable in the classrooms, so well, that's true here and in the high school, um, just some, um, in order to make uh, the day-to-day -day activities in the building in the fall and in the spring uh, more comfortable. Um, we saw the Mills Lawn window units. We think that should be an early priority in terms of replacement. Of course, the whole HVAC and looking at the whole HVAC uh, and how to approach that. 
terms of the electric system or outlets in classrooms, there is still a push attic uh, panel here in this building, uh, which should be a high priority to replace. The internet uh, reliability is, a, is um, something that uh, we thought with some adjustment of connections could be improved. Um, there's also an issue of the agency student computers. I'm sure the administration's very aware of that uh, when those need to be replaced. Um, the high school tower, the second floor, there used to be bathrooms up there. They were taken out um, and there's a lot of need for more uh, bathrooms for the students and evidently there's still plumbing that's in those walls that you know, those could be replaced fairly, fairly easily. Um, there's the question of, you know, will we be moving towards teachers um, working out of offices? Well, this, the, I think the spatialization studies is um, going to play a role in determining, you know, how this will be done. Um, looking at the accessibility needs for both buildings and then the trailers at Mills Lawn, which is where the orchestra uh, is working, the orchestra band, um, would those be a high priority to replace them? So those were to replace the prioritization list that we came up with. Questions or comments? I, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> um, if you go back up to the sure. Bell's Lawn list, I will just say there were there were three things. Richard came over, so I walked around the building right. with him. I think he picked the hottest day, by the way. <laughs> um, but we, I have the securing the window air conditioner um, on the list for the community day. I think that's somebody that would you know that has those tools and knows what they're doing they can do that so um, we are well aware of all three of those and those will be taken care of by the start of school and, and some of the um, high school ones um, you know we we are we've discussed the open flooring at the windows but quite honestly there's nothing we can do about the openness of the stairs I mean that's just a poor, poor design um, there's just nothing that we can really do with it. And it is a safety issue. Uh, Chromebooks, you know, I'm getting ready to go in my fourth year here, and I think we purchased 700 student Chromebooks in four years. So I'm going to argue that the age of student Chromebooks is not a, a, a connectivity issue. Um, and then I guess you, you said the magic word, Judith, about the space utilization study for this. Um, change from each teacher having classrooms to offices. Um, yeah. So. Um, so, and the space, it sounds like you're working with, the, Mike's going to be working with the school administration about um, the spatialization study, correct? Uh, we didn't talk about that, but uh, well, yeah, I mean, I have it right here. So here's the um, uh, Mills Lawn. And so, as you can see, the way elementaries operate differently than middle schools and high schools, so there's not real movement back and forth. <laughs> so what she did is, you know, the school day is 6.5 hours, and here's how many hours the rooms are occupied. So if you're thinking about how do we, let's say for example, there needs to be some type of addition where you have to move kids. There is no way to do that here unless you bring in temporary a temporary structure. Um, and again, this is in the folder um, by, by classroom and um, so it's by room. You know how many hours students are in there how many hours teachers are in there and then what's the total um, occupation of that space is that are those room numbers key to a plan uh, what do you mean are they yeah like where, they where's, on the floor plan yeah like where's room two yeah i mean i mean I know two is right there but is it mm -hmm. is that label that like on a 
They're they're all labeled. Yeah. Okay. They are. So, so this is Mills Lawn. I'm just going to show you what the middle school, high school one looks like, and then if you have any questions. So this one, this goes by bells because there is movement. So you would think if there's any room for, for extra space to be had, um, it would be here. But out of the seven bell day, you can see how many bells each room is occupied. Um, so, that's kind of by room, and then Jack also said, okay, here it is by room, and here it is by period, right? So first bell, there's three classrooms available. Um, and then, you know, so overall, you, we're not seeing like large spaces, even for, when I think back to that uh, item on the prioritization list, you know, move teachers out of classrooms into offices so we can put other classes in there. There's not a lot of room to do that, and there's not an office to put the teachers in. So it's kind of a, a double whammy. Um, now, if you have offices, that might you might be able to work some kind of the one you're going here, the two you're going here, but it's it's kind of a double problem. I also I think it's important to know um, from a teacher standpoint, being a traveling teacher and having to be in a different classroom every period is a significant disruption to their their preparation, their ability to have their space, their ability to have materials, to set up for class. Like the, the idea that a teacher is moving in the same four minutes that the kids are moving and that they're ready to start class. Um, you know, if, if we're talking about that being a temporary solution while we're doing a, a renovation in addition, that might be realistic, but long term, I think that's really a challenging environment for Do you have the second and third floor also? Yeah, here, here it is. Oh, there we go. Okay, got it. Thank you. What room is 202, Jen? That was uh, Miss Morrison's room, and she taught it's in the library. It's a small classroom. So it was, that classroom was so small yep. that all of her algebra classes had to be taught in the library this year. So she traveled. Um, she taught in the library yep. three bells, and then taught in her classroom three bells because of the bells. size. Yep. And that's when students are in there, so the teachers are in there on their plan period. Right, which would the, be the seventh, the seventh, which would be the seventh bell. And your gym is utilized six periods of the day, so the idea of having a separate classroom on the stage isn't practical because you've got PE okay. going on there for right. six periods a day. I wanted to say when the experts were talking, when when this mention of teachers being in offices versus classrooms, um, there was some, I don't know where the information, but there was some um, potential requirement when uh, we, under we, we understood that uh, the OFCC, when it's involved, sometimes given the amount of uh, space that they allow in their, in their uh, projects, that sometimes that was required. So that's more of a question so okay. that we're advocating for. Oh, you mean like a teacher that. office was required? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, just that to make rooms more, you know, rather than sitting and doing your work when your class is not in your classroom, in your classroom you might go to an office, something like that. So that was just, um, so that was Bethel, more of a question. I think that's all in that. I, I, don't they, know that it's had, I don't know that it's required, but I think they, they don't want to, they had so much square footage that they wanted to use for classrooms. Right. That yeah, they, that was more the question, yeah. because it's not that we're advocating for that. I can understand that it would be mm -hmm. difficult. Thank you. Okay, and then the prioritization of deep renovation and the construction list, and I'm just where is that? That is not started. <laughs> okay. right. So there's nothing to discuss. Uh, that, right? that, that, will that will be part of what you guys are this, this okay. process, and it's going to take us. Uh, I'm going to have to be brought up to speed by the principals, and then we'll get there. Okay. I will venture a guess, an educated guess, that at the top of the list is going to be school security. Um, Mike and I talked about it at length. We've invited 
the community and parents in on Thursday and talk again about school security. Um, so that, I, I think, will absolutely be part of this plan that, that really would kind of cross over um, in both areas. Where did you venture a couple more priorities? <laughs> Um, I think electric, I mean, it, and, and, and while it's an infrastructure piece, it, it really is a productivity, educational piece. I mean, I was here early, couldn't find the extension for Carlos is looking for an outlet. Guess what? This is the newer part of the building, and we don't have enough outlets. I mean, that's just the way of our life here, and so um, I think things like that will be a priority. I think small spaces um, where our intervention specialist, our special ed teachers, or our um, related services, speech, OT, school site, where they can meet privately with kids. Um, we are so desperate for those. Even just a, a tutor working with a child who needs help in reading. I mean, right now here, you're on display for everybody in the world. Um, so I think that those types of things will rise to priority. I think, Jody, I, I heard you earlier as I was walking out food service, um, just space for kids to really eat. Um, I think those rise to the top of my head. I, they might uh, have different ideas. And then, of course, we have the user surveys as well. Yeah, I mean, something that's come up for, I've worked in a building that's been renovated, um, same age, uh, renovated, gosh, it's been 10 years now. Technology, wiring things like that. Right. It's huge. The, the disparity between those lines and what I've got, document cameras, smart boards. Smart boards being thrown out now. They don't have smart boards here and they're we're already throwing them out of my building. Got, Can you tell me where you are? I mean, I'm sorry, Beaver Creek. It's, um, I'm in an elementary building um, built in the 50s. Uh, they renovated five buildings at the same time. Did it over a summer. I think there were two buildings that were these two different summers. Um, that would be a really good, um, it's not comparable because of what you alluded to, is financing would be totally different in Beaver Creek than it would be here, but um, it would be a similar building to Mills Lawn. I really don't have an idea about the high school. It really is a different situation. But um, they did manage it real well, but there was it was still very expensive. But we're rewired, they rewired just this year. I mean, Mills Lawn is really behind the curve in technology. They're rewiring, it's already been two or three rewires. The, the internet technology there, they're constantly doing things to update and improve. So, so to piggyback off something Chris said, David talked about some degree. Um, on the prioritized list you had electrical and AC. Are there things though that we need to wait? And it seems to me like we're going to need the deep assessment of regular response, and maybe yeah. from Mike um, before you could do much about it. For instance, like on the electrical, I don't know. We can't say it's good or bad. How do you know that we can just add outlets? Has anyone done an assessment on how much amperage we're pulling for class? Is, is it the system designed to handle that? Do we have the right wiring in? I mean, so of course, this building would wire it up in. Built. Um, I don't know if you can just go through and add elements to a yeah. classroom. There's prescriptive, it's very specific for what you can So I think that we need, on some of the prioritized lists, we may need to kind of wait until we get a deeper assessment on an electrical one, maybe the HVAC. If we, if we know you, if we're just listing controls, but controls can be a, can be a sink of cash, uh, especially on an old HVAC system, so it may not be worth doing it until you got a bit of analysis of where the current system is at. So. When do you go back to school? The uh, teachers come August 12th. We're just about a month out. What are the classrooms oh, occupied the students? August 17th, 18th, whatever that, that next Thursday is. Yeah. To your point, we need to do a um, load um, summary in each electrical panel. So we put a little uh, device in the electrical panel that's a, basically uh, a meter. And so we can determine what each panel, how much power each panel is taking, and that gives us an idea of 
how much we can add each minute. So that'll be something we'll have to do with it after school starts. But do you want to know from users what their, I mean, the, these reports that we put together as a committee, do you, doesn't that help you? No, no I, I mean, I'd like to tell know about it. By looking at a building, what's working and what's no, not, don't no. you need to hear from the people who use it? And the, Certainly and, would like that. Yeah. So, you, so that not, like you may that. not agree with it all or whatever, but you might find that there's, oh, well, the answer to that is as simple as or that, but it would be helpful. Sure, to absolutely. with your own group and come up with your position or are you going to review for the initial documents or what so for that preliminary report yes i'm going to tell you what we think and then um you're going to tell us what you think <laughs> and we'll have, have a discussion of the other report yes. you want to have a clean slate of yes yes so kind of unbiased and then we'll have a discussion and I would find it very helpful if we could take a moment and kind of revisit the timeline. I recall when we started, I thought we were talking about important things happening in the fall, and I wonder if that's still practical. Uh, I, mean, I, I understand where there are long-range planning aspects to this that involve deadlines for putting things on ballots plans being made and so forth and is it possible to just quickly hit that? Yep. We we have not we have missed all full deadlines um, for getting on the ballot. Correct. Yeah. So um, I mean in, in a way I think that might be helpful. Well, we weren't expecting to do um, <laughs> no but I think at board meetings I know Amy at one point said we could do this for November. <laughs> Oh, we, we, we can. So I think, I think is that what you're asking, Scott? Or yeah, so I'm just understand? wondering what our sense of <coughs> process and, you know. Well, this, a is a, this, is a, this is a big discussion that involves the board and the community. I mean, if I'm going to weigh in, I think we're years overdue. Years overdue for this. Um, but does that mean May or does that mean November of 23? Um, I don't know. I think that's something that the board needs to discuss uh, kind of internally as well as with the community. Um, we do have other, um, you know, financial issues that will be coming up on the horizon um, in the next few years. But, yeah. Thank you. I don't know if TJ or Judith have anything to say about that, but certainly not, not November if that's no. what people are asking. No. You know, my expectation was May at the earliest. Yeah, and, and I, I guess I will, I just want to say, you, you know, the difference between going in May or next November is just the timing of it. So the collection of it would be the, the same whether we vote in, on something in May or November. Because right? so the, the, when does collection start the following? It, it depends. Oh. So um, depends on what we vote on. But you said the collection would be the same. So, right, if you vote on something in May, so like the, the I might have the, the chart in front of me, but if you vote on something for May, like the renewal of the permanent improvement levy, or if you vote on it in November, it's not going to affect the collection date. The collection date will start at the same time. So there's not, there's not a difference other than getting it passed sooner. I see. Um, that's kind of good. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> we don't you usually get three shots. You get three shots at 11. Um, November, November. Yeah, November, May, November again. Um, so, like, the permanent improvement that we have that's coming off, we would have to go this that November, right. May, or next November to keep that money. Right. Um, or, you know, or change it at that point. But there's not a... You know, if you ran something this November, you could collect on it sooner. 
then next November. But if you run something in May, you're not going to be able to collect on it sooner than you would if you vote on it the following November. All right. Is there any other questions, comments? Yeah, yeah. I just want to say thank you to those of you who are volunteering your time to really think about these issues in great depth. And Judith, you really have a challenge, I think, to get, you know, uh, have everybody coming together with this, these great open minds and looking at these with new, from new perspectives. It's a huge challenge. And, um, uh, you know, even though TJ is the only person I recognize from school pickup, I know Mrs. Slaughter, of course, and I grew up with your son, Mr. Papania. Uh, and so I know that you all have vested interest in this, these buildings and these places and this town. And it's tough. I think it's emotionally tough for us because we as a town really only get to do this like once in our life. So it's a big deal. It's a really big deal and we all want to get it right. And I think if we, it's, it's just going to be really important this time around to focus on the things that we agree on and and find where that, find that inspiring vision to take us there. So thank you. Yeah, I'll just <clears throat> just echo the thanks. It's, uh, I don't know how many of these meetings I'll come to, but I just really appreciate all the effort y'all have put into this. Being in this room is kind of triggering as like a parent with, uh, who's usually here for IEP meetings. Um, and um, it just, I, I just really appreciate all the effort that all of y'all have put into uh, trying to work this out for our kids. Get out early. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. This is everyone.